What a special moment. Cheers. Don't chew it. Yeah. Don't chew it? Swallow it. Chewing is pointless. There are two Papuas, West Papua of Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. Together they make up the second largest island on Earth. Today we're in Jayapura, the gateway to West Papua. Well, a region unlike any other and completely different from the rest of Indonesia. Papua to the rest of Indonesia is more about nature. Here we'll be documenting some of the most secluded tribal cultures on Earth, learning how they live, and how they eat. <laughs> Our journey begins in West Papua's capital, where I'll sample the local sticky staple, papeta. When it changes, it's like instant, right? Yep. It's like magic, I'm telling you. And I'll get my fill of street food like you've never seen before. Give me some water. We gotta keep shooting. <laughs> what show is this anymore? This morning, we're making our way to Lake Sentani, where a local village is serving up an iconic Papuan dish. But first, we're making a pit stop at one of the countryside's many street-side snack shacks. Are these kids going to school? Yeah. Did they go to school today? No, I think it's summer break. Oh, summer break. When I was on summer break, I would work at a gas station slash video store, and that's kind of what they're doing in the form of being fruit vendors. This is water guava, one of the many fruits you need to Indonesia. It looks beautiful. It feels kind of waxy on the outside. You want to try some out? Here, I bought this pile, I think. Let's try it out. Oh. A little sour, yeah? It's all over the place. The texture itself is very like fibrous and like a little like styrofoam. Uh -huh. And then it's sour like a grape and has a pine needle finish. We're just kind of trying to pad out the video right now with fruit, but actually I just want to do the drugs over there. There's drugs over there. Yes. Can we do those? <laughs> This green little innocent seed comes from the areca palm and can be found throughout much of Asia. Like in Taiwan, where I tried it for the first time. Hi, Taiwan. Shoring gum. When you come to Papua, you'll notice that some people have a lot of red color in their mouth and red spit. And even if you look here, you can see where people have been spitting. Beetle nut. Its vendors and evidence of its use can be found all over the island, from the elderly to the newly initiated. What do we do? Peel it with your teeth. It's like a mini coconut. We're trying to get the husk off it, right? Yeah. <sighs> Nailed it! Check it out. So this is the fully husked version. The skin is a little bit citrusy and a little bit bitter at the same time. Did you know this is the fifth most addictive psychoactive drug in the world? I didn't know Yeah, that. so coffee, alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, and then this. This is number five, and here we go. The betel nut creates feelings of euphoria, alertness, stamina, and scarlet-colored saliva. Chew it. Keep it all. It is so bitter. To get the full chemical effect, they combine beetle vine dipped in calcium hydroxide. Oh, we'll bite it. So next time you see patches of red stained earth, you'll know where it came from. It's like an old western movie over here. Come here. Wow. Hey, listen, if you're a kid watching, don't do this. How does it make you feel? Do you just feel good? Yeah. Am I doing it right? More chalk, more red. Am I all red? Do you feel it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't think so. It just feels gross. Well, what a cultural moment. Every culture around the world, near and far, no matter where you go, they have their own way to get twisted. And here is no different. For me, it's, I'm pretty cash. Yeah, I'm so, pretty cash too. Yeah, we're both cash. Someone threw a water balloon and it symmetrically landed on me. It's so embarrassing, but we have to keep shooting. I only brought one shirt. What can we do? It's not sweat. Lake Sintani lined with homes built to survive the rising tide each day. Here, people depend on the lake for their livelihood, whether fishing for market or to bring dinner back home to the family. But you're from Papua. I was born and raised here. Is it a lot different from other parts of Indonesia? It's more about nature of Papua. We have gold mine and rainforest. Papua is still largely unspoiled and undeveloped, with 85% of the region still covered in forest. The food here, is it a lot different? It's very different, especially papeta. What is papeta? It's from a sagu tree, like swallowing slime. Remember this food in Makassar? Well, in Papua, you can find it everywhere. 
but the way they eat it is a little different. Has that been fermented? Yep. Pour in the water. When it changes, it's like instant, right? Yep. It's like magic, I'm telling you. Oh, it's happening. It goes from that liquid form until this crazy looking glue. Super thick. If the color's not right, add more boiling water. What color are we looking for? The clearer, it better. Look at this tool. This is like a big wooden fork. That's for eating. For eating? Yeah. Wait, so we can just eat it from the, really? So I can just try it like this. Twist it up, make a little spindle of goo. What a special moment. We're all eating some papeta. 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 You should have swallowed it, yeah? I'm trying. Don't chew it. Yeah. Don't chew it? Swallow it. Chewing is pointless. Wow, there's not much flavor. It's just yep. a little bit of that fermented sensation going on in there. But man, that texture is something else. That is pure slime. Is there a nicer thing to compare it to? It's like, an, you know, a nice loogie. Papeta is an absolute staple here. Fermented starch from the sago tree mixed with hot water that can be dumped into a leaf, folded, and allowed to set. The texture completely changes the color too. It's become a solid again. Oh my gosh, look at that. Wanna try it out? Oh, now you can chew it. Solid. Mm, still next to no flavor, but if you're hungry, that is energy packed. Joining our papeta goldfish soup, mashed carrots and shallots, along with salt, MSG, onion, turmeric, lemongrass, and lime leaves. This seasoned blend gets dumped into some boiling hot water. These are just from the lake here where the house is on. They're called goldfish. They don't look that gold, but they're absolutely fish. <laughs> Grandma's putting in the fish. Next, some lime. Oh, this looks delicious. And then a bunch of mints. It's like a gourmet meal right in the village here. I won't remember who you are. Oma, Oma, thank you for joining us and helping to cook this meal. What do we do first? Walk me through it. Oh, so you start with some broth. Yes, very nice. It's better to eat it when it's hot. Wow, look at that. It gets coated in that sauce a little bit. What do you do? Just cut it a little. All right, here we go. Got a big gluey bite. Mm. The sauce is amazing, but that texture takes a lot of getting used yes. to. It's just very new, very different, unique, kind of gooey texture in my mouth, and it like I, you can't really chew through it. It keeps its shape. I'm gonna try some of this fish now. This fish has been beautifully cooked. It's real good, yeah. Because it's clear. It has that little mineral kind of taste to it with the turmeric and all these wonderful spices. Oh, so good. What do you think of your own cooking? Enough. Yeah, enough. Oma, thank you so much. Mm. At the Just down the street and alongside the lake, a family is preparing a once-in-a-lifetime feast, and they've invited us to take a look. We stopped at a local home along the highway. You're making some meat here. Can I ask what you're cooking? Bobby, Bobby. this pig. After bringing her pig parts to market, she decided to cook up the portions that didn't sell. And here we are. What's in there? That's the head. That's a whole hog's head? That looks nuts. It's like a wild boar. Like, the teeth are all... These are pork ribs, boiled then placed on the grill to finish them off. The skin itself has become kind of hard and bubbled up. Huh? If you want to bring this one, she said it's okay. Oh, just take it? Oh, I cannot take all your food. Oh, it's so hot. It's just from the fire. Have you put any salt or any seasoning on here? Lemongrass uh -huh. and lime leaf. Can we try it together? Thick, mm. chewy skin, super oily. Well, wow, that's so cool. I think for the first time, you knocked it out of the park. It's very good. And that's not it. She even invited us to her house to try a dish consisting of skin, fat, and innards. Can you tell me what dish this is? She just brought this one out. Yeah, what did you mama? Ketchup. Ah, so soy sauce? With soy sauce, yeah. All cooked up together with soy sauce, lemongrass, and thyme. Mmm, oh, that's a very nice flavor to it. It's like very heavy, like oily, fatty, but some nice seasoning on there. How long have you lived here? Before she was born, she was already here. Wow. And the pigs, do you just feed them bugs or what do they eat? Leftovers from... Uh, so they're eating a lot of pe pap papitan. Papito. Papito? Papita. We just stopped by randomly, but thank you for being so nice to us. All right, doing makasi. We worked our way from the countryside back here to the city of Jayapura, the capital of Papua. And right now we're kind of roaming the streets for some street food, checking out what they have. But a lot of the street food here in the city is similar to what you'd find in other parts of Indonesia. That's just been kind of brought over here, adopted by the people. Before the sun goes down, we're going to take a look and see what we can find. Let's go. We got all kinds of street stalls here. Everything's golden brown, so you have to kind of look closely to figure out what it is. Here, we've got triangles. 
These are plantains for sure. These little balls, I have no idea what they are, but they look real nice. I saw another lady eating them. I was like, what's that? And then she spit it out of her mouth to show me and put it back in. That was real nice. And even then, it still looked pretty good. So I'm gonna get some of those. Hello, what is this? A Chang Jo. Can I have two of those? And five of these. Mmm, peace on goring. We're doing it. Just little numbers and pointing. I'm more than just nine to five. For just the low price of, I don't know, they're figuring it out right now. Um, it looks good, fried on the outside, and it's a ball. I'm gonna do a little detective work and figure out what this is. Oh, what? That is bomb. If you put some banana bread in the microwave, it just kind of heated it up and then also fried it. <laughs> that's what it would taste like. That's so good. Oh, that's going right to my hip. You know what I mean? Beyond that, here. Ooh, this looks like two that got glued together with the frying batter. Gonna give that a try? Right now. It's almost like a normal banana, but just far more starchy. I like that. I need like some dip or some frosting. Ketchup, some ranch, sour cream, a vat of cheese would be nice. But alone is okay too. When you fry stuff, it becomes yummy, but it all just kind of looks golden brown. When you look here, it all looks almost the same. And then you have to be like, oh man, I'm gonna do some detective work and yell at the off-screen producer. Hey, what's this one? Soybean. Oh, you know what? I think it's soybean. I think this is some kind of um, wrapped a banana in flour, like kind of a flour batter sheet. I'm gonna try that. I love sheet. I mean, hi. Um, oh yeah, is it ready just like that? What? Look at that. Have you ever seen a banana that looks like that on the inside? I haven't. It looks like an alien laid eggs inside. Well, I bet it's good. It's got character. That's what my mom would say. It's not messed up looking. Let's try it out. Mm, dude, it's like a bomb banana pastry. Soft, sweet banana on the inside and kind of doughy pastry on the outside. Cool. I'm gonna feel terrible at the end of this. Everything's fried, but it's so yummy. Hello again. Can I have two of these? Yeah. Ah! No, I'm just kidding. It's okay. It's okay. Ah! No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm just kidding. You're such a sweetheart. Thank you. What show is this anymore? This went from like, wow, guys, check out the beautiful countryside to I'm gonna try 100 foods in 10 minutes. Here, it looks like some tofu. Give it a little break. Ooh, it's hot. Oh, there you go. Tofu with chilies. Let's try it out. That's good too, but I think everything needs sauce. Maybe they put sauce on it. Sauce? Oh, sauce it up. Thank you. I could just feel like this is a vessel for sauce. It's not meant to be consumed just alone like that. And there we go. Oh, spicy. Sambal sauce. Oh, yeah. That's got some kick to it. A little salty, very spicy. That is a nice addition. We've come to our final stop right now, right here. It is like a decked out banana dessert. We're gonna shoot this real quick because evidently you need a shooting permit to be here and the police are in search of people doing undercover journalism about the gold mines here. But the only gold mine I'm looking for is a nice dessert to wrap up the day. Is that too insensitive? The base of this dish, heaps of fried banana. But what makes it really special is mounds of chocolate and cheese sprinkled on top. Not crazy enough for you? How about double the layers? There is no better way to end the day than with a fried banana dessert covered with cheese and chocolate sprinkles. I mean, what is going on here? It is just kind of a twisted masterpiece. Try it out. Oh, that's pretty awesome, man. It's syrupy, chocolatey, and then there's this weird sharpness that you get from this cheese. Who knows what kind of cheese that is? The heat of the banana is kind of making all the sprinkles and chocolate melt everywhere. I gotta say, for just randomly walking down the street of Papua's capital, this is a great treat to stumble upon. It is a mountain of food, too, for just a few bucks. I think they nailed it, and I think we nailed it. Today was a fun day of adventuring all throughout the countryside and back into the city, and man, if you think this video was crazy, let me tell you, we're just getting started here. It's about to get way crazier. Next time, we're flying to Papua's highlands, hanging out with the Danny people, and taking part in a food ritual few have ever seen before. From researching and shooting, 
to editing and mastering. Our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Guys, that has been street food in and around Jaipur, the capital of Papua. If you think this was fun, we are just getting started. The next few videos here are gonna get really crazy. As always, thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. A piece. Before you go, let me tell you about our new merchandise. It's a shirt that says balls, but it's so much more than that. It's an ode to the wonderful ball-shaped food found all across our ball-shaped globe. Balls, 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 balls. Balls. Get your ball shirt or sweatshirt today by clicking the link below. Underneath the rose of dreams.